Just call it Army. Yeah, yeah. Logan's brought several crazy things through here. Why haven't he, why haven't he wanted to be a Marine? You get West Point, you can do it. That counts. Whenever the site behind them. Yeah, the back, but right now. Well, you can be. You can be in the army and do a seal. Okay. Well, in the large footprint. Though they've done a lot to break that up. Yeah, you, yeah, you have to at least be in the army. Some years back, that was one of my biggest regrets. Yeah, yeah, going to service. Yeah, and it had gotten developed. No, I, I should have. I should have done it after to start uh, assembling and also putting in apartments and duplexes. And just a couple of duplexes that happened, but for the most part, the neighborhood. It's kind of how you feel the rest of them. Like any other job, is a cupcake. Yeah. Next, and whatever so next for me, I think it would be like 96, I guess it was. So maybe yeah. Not together, addition and down something. Take it down. Mm -hmm. but, Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, I'd like to call to order the February 15th meeting of the Design Review Board. Will the board members please introduce themselves? We can start over at Cameron. Uh, Cameron Boland, Cameron Bolin, AIA representative. <laughs> Sorry for yelling. Perry Childress, East Tennessee Community Design Center. Uh, Matthew debard Laban, Downtown Knoxville Alliance. Josh Wright, Urban Design Representative. Lindsay Crockett, Knoxville, Knox County Planning. Joey Natour, Business Development Representative. Laura Cole, Downtown Resident Representative. Suzanne Taravella, Neighborhood Representative. Jessica Kitts, Knoxville, Knox County Planning. Peter Aaron, City, Plans Review and Building Inspections. Christina McGron, City of Knoxville Law Department. Thank you for that. And I just got a text from John. He said he'll be here in just a minute. <laughs> I beat him. John Thurman. <laughs> so um, uh, we can get through the formalities while he's getting here. Uh, the minutes of the board meeting for January 18th were in the packet. Um, has everyone had a chance to review them? And does anybody have any changes to that? I move to approve the minutes. All right, Laura's given us a motion to approve. And we have a second. Second. Okay, Cameron's given us a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you for that. And then we can move on to uh, staff reports. Do we have any? Yes, there was just one that was approved administratively since the last meeting. This was a minor expansion to an existing driveway. Um, the it, So you can see it called out here. Um, the it, Both the existing and the proposed parking areas are pretty much unable to meet guidelines due to the site constraints and the house placement. There is not an operable alley and um, the house has a seven foot and a five foot setback. So um, that was a staff approval at 1123 Texas Avenue. And that's it. All right, thank you for that. So let's move on to the first one. Where are we at 2A23IH, 218 Atlantic Avenue. This will be a new house. Okay, so this is a new primary residence fronting Atlantic Avenue. Um, you can see the uh, photo taken by staff in the Google Street View image of the site on your screen now. Um, this is a one-story residence with a front gable roof, an exterior of fiber cement lap siding, and a foundation clad in brick veneer. Um, this house is 36 feet wide by 50 feet long, and it's proposed to be set 21 feet from the front property line at the closest point. Um, you can see images of the facade elevation and also the side and rear elevations here on the screen, and I'm happy to break down those down as we need. Um, in general, uh, let's see. So this house is proposed to be set approximately 21 feet from the front property line. The average front setback of the block is 28 feet, and the adjacent new construction, which you can see here, that was reviewed by the infill, um, by the design review board in 2021, at 222 Atlantic Avenue, that one is 26 feet from the front property line. 
Um, this house should be moved approximately five feet towards the rear property line to align with the front setback pattern of the block. And the final site plan should include a walkway from the front porch to the sidewalk. Um, in general, the proposed house is proportional to the dimensions of the lot and the other houses on the block. The side setbacks will be evenly spaced. It will be compatible in scale and design with the adjacent house, which was also built by the same applicant. Um, this block does not have an operable alley. So um, to meet the design guidelines, the applicant should re revise this proposed parking to extend to one lane alongside the house with space for parking at least 20 feet behind the facade. Um, final modifications may be necessary to meet city engineering standards. The design includes an eight foot deep uh, partial width front porch. The design should be revised to include at least eight by eight square posts per previous infill housing reviews. They have um, two, looks like, oh, those are six by sixes that are shown there. The house does have um, sufficient front and side elevation transparency that meet the design guidelines. The facade window placement um, may need to be revised to be more symmetrical, um, similar, which meets the design guideline of similar proportion and position as original houses on the block. That's just referring to the somewhat irregular spacing of the one bay here on the right and then the bay on the left. The materials and the roof pitch meet the design guidelines. And the final site plan should include a native or naturalized shade tree in the front and rear yard. So the staff recommendation is to approve 2A23IH, subject to the conditions that the front setback be modified to align with the pattern of the block, the front parking be revised to meet infill housing guidelines, and the final site plan to meet city engineering standards, um, incorporating a walkway from the front door to the sidewalk, the front porch to include um, at least eight by eight square posts, revision to the facade window placement as necessary, and then the final site plan to incorporate the shade trees in the front and rear yards. Thank you for that, Lindsay. Um, is the applicant here? Would they like to speak? Doesn't look like it. They are not. <clears throat> okay, then we'll move ahead with comments from the board. Does anybody have anything they'd like to say? I assume that there's going to be a door into the screen porch on the back at the top of the steps. And so I was just wanting to clarify that that would be the case. Well, um, I, don't, I don't know besides what is shown on these uh, drawings either, but I would um, also hope that that is the case and that's something I could, that's a note I can definitely provide to the builder. Was there, was there a floor plan provided too with it? I can't remember. I'm just trying to understand the triple roof change in the front. Can you pull that up? Elevation. Hmm. So is this about what you'd like to see? Yeah, that's right. And I can zoom in wherever you. Yeah, I was. I, I guess they're just doing it just to articulate the entry that much more, rather than just pumping bumping it out once. Yeah, and Suzanne, it looks like that's a screened-in porch. Like, yeah, I saw in the plan weird. that they have a thirty-six-inch door called out. It just didn't make it into the elevations. Yeah. Could you go back to the elevations? I'm sorry. I should just get a packet so I can quit making these. Why, yes, you should. Answer around. Okay. I always say something about this, but is there a reason why the, the windows are so much higher than the door? Is it just an exorbitantly tall house? Is there any information on the house height? Maybe it's a small door. Yeah, that's it. It's a little I do not see a height measurement provided on the elevation drawings. Um, 
you know, I could probably do a rough measurement from PDF, but I'm, I'm not always certain that what's provided is to scale in the PDFs. So I would hesitate to provide that for you. Yeah, on A1.2, there's a framing plan, and it looks like they would be lower than what they're shown on the elevation from the framing plan. And my only th thought, I guess, would be to possibly at the entry, as long as it's not over, I mean, if it's over 30 inches, of course, it has to have fall protection. And I, I would also think that it needs handrails to the door. Um, so that's just something I think, I guess, we'd pick up in building the permitting. But um, I know that we've often argued for enclosure of the front porch, even without the needed fall protection, just because it looks kind of naked. Um, without it. I don't know if anybody else agrees. Unless they put like, you know, hollies or shrubs in front of it, yeah. Yeah, they can fall into the hollies. Right? Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, if you can't see, I guess. Just kidding. Hey, Lindsay, when you, did, did the applicant, have they seen the staff recommendation or did they comment in any way? They did not respond, but they have been provided the staff report in the agenda packet. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, because it addresses, like, stuff about the windows that you've talked about, you know, and other things. So, um, which I'm, I feel fine about, so. Yeah, I kind of feel like since they're not here, we ought to, if, if everybody agrees and everybody agrees to the staff report, um, that we could let Lindsay have it and let her use her judgment and if, it get, if, if they come back and say no, then they can come back to us in person. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd make a recommendation to approve with the staff recommendations, our motion to approve with staff recommendations and then, you know, any design related to the windows and other things, Lindsay, you know, staff can make final decision on or recommendations unless they feel uncomfortable. I just have one thing to ask though on the window and irregularity and that sort of thing. Could it, would it also include possibly the, the fact that the stair and the entry door are just shifted ever so slightly not centered and those sort of, you know, just some sort of some symmetry discussion. If you're gonna already be commenting on the window layout, that might be something to include within that just on the placement of those openings. It's be a general, general statement of opening placement. Yeah, it looks like on the floor plan that's pretty feasible. Doesn't look like it aligns with anything, so. So that's my motion. I'll second that. Thank you. Okay, so you, what, what's your motion? Staff recommendation and Lindsay can do any design related issues unless it's, you know, unless there's conflict and they can come back to the board. Okay. We've got a second with Laura. So we've got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. All right, let's move on to 306 West Churchwell Avenue, uh, 2B23IH. Lindsay? Okay. Um, so these are two townhouse buildings on um, a piece of property that's zoned RN4. Um, one of the townhouse buildings will contain three units and one will contain four units. Um, these buildings will be oriented towards Worth Street. So um, here you have the site plan on the screen and then um, the KGIS showing how the parcels are currently. Um, the townhouses will be set 10 feet from the front property line at the closest point and then three feet from the left side property line, the northwest elevation on Churchwell. These are two two-story craftsman style townhouse buildings with multiple projecting and recessed front gable roof massings with shed roof porches and front gables on the first story. They are clad in alternating lap siding and board and batten siding um, with roofs clad in asphalt shingles and foundations of brick veneer. There are gable fields clad in a shingle siding. 
Um, you can see the primary entries that have metal shed roofs um, and then engaged front gable massing sections. There are double hung um, windows that are relatively evenly spaced on the facade and side elevations. And then on the rear, as you can see in elevation here and then in 3D here, um, five units contain the garage doors. Um, so in general, these townhouses are proposed to be set 10 feet from the front property line at the closest point. Um, that meets the base zoning requirement for the front setback. Um, and the townhouses are proposed for a three-foot side setback on Churchwell Avenue. This is a reduction in the corner side setback that can be approved by the DRB. Um, the reduced side setback allows the townhouses to be smaller in height um, and somewhat larger in width and meet the guidelines that on corner, corner lots, side yard setbacks should be handled traditionally. That is closer to the side street. So that's the design guideline that would be applicable there. Um, this block is characterized by modified one-story Queen Anne cottages, minimal traditionals, and infill construction. Um, these parcels, as you can see on the site plan here, this is the far west end of the infill housing overlay in the Oakwood Lincoln Park area. It's adjacent to some industrial development and the rail line. Um, and these townhouses do meet the purpose of the R and 4 zoning district, um, some mixed residential development. Um, these townhouses interpret the craftsman style for seven units. They're between 15 feet and 20 feet wide. The design uses porches, bays, and breaks in the front facade to continue the architectural rhythm of the block. And the townhouse units are divided into separate sections that are proportionately similar to original houses on the block. So here I'd note that I'm actually, what I'm, I'm referring to here are a section of the design guidelines that the, this board hasn't, um, I don't think has used yet. Those are the multi-unit housing. So there's a section called out in the infill housing guidelines for this type of development. Um, and so that's what I've been referring to in these staff comments. Um, the guidelines do recommend that height should be similar to the original houses along the street. Um, this block is characterized by one to one and a half story construction. However, this lot is a transition to that industrial development to the west. The parking meets the infill housing guidelines. It's located at the rear of the property with a driveway located off the side street. Um, there are multiple site plane items that um, have been provided by city engineering related to sidewalks, utility and drainage easements, et cetera. Um, and these can be addressed during the platting and the permitting process. The front porches are generally compatible with a front porch and craftsman design. They are more shallow than um, what's typically recommended for single family houses in the infill overlay. Um, there is sufficient transparency via window and doors on street facing elevations. Um, one note here would be that the applicant sh should select one over one or full three over one double hung windows to be compatible with the original craftsman style houses on the block instead of these um, partial three over one over one. Um, the townhouse roofs have comparable pitches to original houses on the block. There is a significant amount of complexity. Um, in the opinion of staff, minor modifications may be necessary. Um, such as shifting some of these first story gable fields to better align with the massings below. Um, however, that also might be something that's shown in elevation and a little bit easier depicted in the 3D renderings. Um, finally, their additional design review is required associated with the RN4 zoning and the townhouse form. Um, that'll occur separately from the infill housing review, but the applicant will be required to meet those base zoning requirements as well. So staff's recommending approval of 2B23IH subject to the conditions that the subdivision plat and the final site plan meet city engineering standards. Um, minor modifications, which don't affect the overall design, could be approved by staff that the applicant select one over one or three over one windows um, to better fit the historic context and use a hor horizontal lap siding with an overlap. Um, minor modifications to the facade roof massings as necessary with approval by staff and then that the final elevations and site plan meet the relevant standards of the R and 4 zoning and the townhouse use. Thank you for that, Lindsay. Is uh, the applicant here? And would they like to add anything to Lindsay's comments? So no one's here to represent this. I think he's on Zoom. Yeah. So okay. Nick, you're able to unmute yourself and speak as necessary. Uh oh. We can't hear you. Hold on. Hold, okay. Hey, Nick, will you hold on just one second while we get you plugged in? You're coming through on my computer and not the sound
that was the only way it worked yesterday. Okay. Does, it, does everybody have a packet in front of them? Everybody have a packet? Okay. Okay, Nick, try to talk now. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, there you go. Yes, great. Please All go right. ahead and introduce yourself first, please. Hello, can you hear me? Uh, I still can barely hear you guys. I can, uh, whoever's talking to me, uh, who's just talking to me, I can hear them very clearly. But uh, everybody else, I can only hear about half of what you say. Oh, okay. Well, I'm, I've got my mouth all over the microphone, so. Um, <laughs> please introduce yourself uh, with your address and uh, let us know what you have to say. My name is Nick Guess. Um, the address of uh, this development is 306 West Churchill Avenue. It's your address. Oh, my address is uh, yes. 410 Stoneville Lane, Knoxville, Tennessee, 37934. Thank you. Do you have anything you'd like to add to uh, Lindsay's comments? Uh, no, I, I, like I said, I couldn't really hear uh, hear everything, but uh, no, I mean I, everything that I, that I have to say is is, is basically uh, in these uh, these drawings. We put a lot of time and effort into them, and I uh, hope you guys like them. Okay, well, thank you. I'll open this up to uh, board comments then. Does anybody have anything they'd like to say? Just for clarity on Nick's uh, part, is it Nick or Nicholas? Uh, Nick is, is fine. Okay. You, you've seen the staff recommendations for your project? Um. Um, no, I, I'm not sure. I, I've seen some, um, some concerns that, uh, I'll, I'll just, I'll go ahead and read them then. Cause this is what we just talked about on the presentation. So I just, as we're talking about it, um, hang on. I may not, I just not on the right page. I'm happy to review them one more time. Okay, here we go. Um, you you mind reviewing them one more time? Absolutely. <laughs> Unless I'm on the right page. <laughs> Thank you, John. I appreciate that. Um, so I will clarify that the applicant was provided with the staff report a week out, and um, I think has had the opportunity to re review these. He's even um, gone back and made some minor revisions. Um, based on the R and four zoning. So I think that he is in the loop. Um, so the staff recommendation is here on your screen. Nick, I know you might be on your phone. So um, it's to approve 2B23IH, um, subject to the conditions that the subdivision plan, plat and the final site plan meet city engineering standards. Modifications could be approved by staff if they do not affect the overall townhouse design. Using one over one or three over one double hung windows to better fit the context. Using horizontal lap siding with an overlap the minor modifications to the facade roof massings as necessary, and then final elevations and the site plan to meet the standards of the R and 4 zoning and the townhouse use. Thank you. <laughs> I just wanna make sure you knew some of our discussion, Nick, is based on those recommendations, so. Yes, yeah, so I've, seen, I've seen most of these, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm willing to, uh, to do whatever I need to do to, uh, to make everybody happy. Okay. Is this lot where Churchwell dead ends and does it go over to the industrial lot? Or is there a grade change there? I'll pull that up on KGIS. Suzanne, are you asking about the the topography? Yes, and 
maybe I'm just m misremembering this area, but I feel like there's a really big, maybe, yeah, where that um, topography kind of stacks up against the industrial area. I was wondering if the topography would prohibit the access to the parking, but it looks like it's manageable. I think I was thinking of something further down the road. Okay. And I would just um, answer that one and say that city engineering has done a preliminary review of the site plan and they didn't provide a note on the slope aspect of it. There definitely are some other site plan and parking related things that the applicant will have to reckon with, especially in permitting. And is that structure on the property there? Is it coming down? Nick, did you hear that uh, question? Uh, did, uh, was the question, um, is the structure still there? Yes. Oh, uh, yeah, no, it's gone. It's gone, okay. Okay, then I have another question. Uh, then I'll be out of questions. Um, I have a what? little bit of a concern and question about the roof line and how water is managed between each gable. It looks like there's a gutter there or maybe a flat roof section. What's the plan for that area? I don't see downspouts coming down from there. For, for what? Between each unit where the, mm -hmm. the roof slopes into each other. Yeah. It's kind of, it's kind of making a butterfly. How am I going to, how are we going to do what? The water? Yeah, manage how the water. Set, set the water. <laughs> um, I'm not sure. I, I, I haven't had to do this yet, but um, I, I think what it's called is like a cricket or something. And uh, I mean, there's, there's a way to do it. I think my designer even has it drawn in on some of the elevations. There's like something, there's something you can put in there that makes the water shed. Okay. Yeah, you can see it right there. There's there's something that you can do. But I can clarify that. I think it's in the best interest of the project to clarify that um, because there's going to be a lot of water trapped in that area and for just the longevity of the building and also aesthetically how the downspouts come down and weave around all of those secondary roofs matters to how the building will look. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Hey, Nick, what, uh, what informed the setbacks, the different setbacks in the faces of the building, the depth? Is there a pretty substantial variation between them from the street, the front yard, basically? Okay. What made the front yard the depths that they are from the differences? Could you, could you ask that one more time? On the front elevation, where they're set back yeah. from the street, there's three that are the same, and there are then four that are stepped back. What set the depth of the four that are stepped back? The, I'm, I'm so sorry, I can barely hear. Um, the, the setbacks for the, the, you're asking the difference in the setbacks for each unit? Like, the, like the, how much they're staggered? Yeah, I just said what was what set that, meaning why why did you decide that depth? It's pretty extreme from the street edge. I just wanted to know what set that. I I, I still can't understand. I'm so sorry. I can't I can't I can't hear. Uh it's ten it's ten feet, but I'm sure that's not your question. He's asking uh, why. Why, why um, ten feet? Well, no. Why are there some massings that are ten feet and then some that are significantly recessed? What, oh, what drove you to do that? Just to give it more depth. So it's not just like a, like a blank face, just so it's not just all lined up. Yeah, when I first started talking to Lindsay about this, I mean, that was one of the first things that she said is, you know, that you guys didn't want to see just a, you know, a big box that y'all wanted to have it, you know, some, some depth to it. And so um, this is kind of what we came up with. Do each of those units have, yeah, the rendering shows a, a sidewalk going to each of them, right? That's what the bottom image, or yeah, it's bottom and top. Yes, yeah, so. You can hear me now. It 
So will these be required to have the, the uh, shade tree and those yards that they basically made on each of them? So the, let me pull that up. The design guideline that has the shade tree that applies says um, one native or naturalized tree should be planted in the front and rear yards of infill houses with 25 feet or more in mm. depth to the front of the house. So he's close enough to the street line to not be required to have the tree. Yeah, you, <clears throat> you might also consider um, adding some depth to that porch. Four foot seven's not really usable um, other than maybe one chair. Uh, and our typical single family depth requirement is eight feet. Uh, these are row houses. It's a little bit different, but um, I think that would also uh, address some of Cameron's concerns about the depth of the building and, and the kind of stream back and forth. Um, also, I just had a question. I couldn't tell how the gable works on the, the, the small gable. The small gable on the front of the building, does it... Does it have the same overhang on all sides of it? Or is it, it looks like it's almost flat on the front elevation on the sides it overhangs. Does the, the front overhang have the same as the side overhang? Yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah, the eyebrow uh, Like the, the small little bump out roof on the first floor yeah yeah I, I, I call them eyebrows but yeah yeah it would have it would line up with the, the overhang on the on the sides okay I'd just speak to that one in terms of the conditions I did notice that one as well and I and that was inherent in in condition three minor modifications to the facade roof massings as necessary okay. Are there any um, are there any other two story houses at adjacent or around this property? Is that something you studied, Nick? Look to see what other size buildings there were around you. Yeah, there's some. I mean, there's like one and a half stories, um, and uh, you know, there's some larger buildings in the area. Uh, and that's one of the reasons that I, I set back the uh, the upstairs is to kind of give it that you know a little bit more of like a one and a half story look. Just to kind of help with that, because that was a concern. You probably have this noted on your drawings, or is this uh, like a vinyl siding or like a hardy siding? It's vinyl. Okay. And you, are the colors, you have a color in mind? I mean, I'm, these are yeah, generally. I like, I like the way the, the white vinyl looks with the, um, you know, the wood, the wood vinyl shake and then the brick skirting. Um, that's, that's what I plan to use. Are they all the same? Or are they different? I mean, are they, is there variation? I'm just curious. Oh, there's. That's a. That right there, that's like a board and batten. Oh, okay. The vertical siding, yeah. And then, so I just did that to kind of break it up. And then the, um, you know, the the horizontal is uh, the five inch straight lap. But as you go down, the all the all the horizontal will be one color. The vertical board and batten will be another color. But the same, all vertical will be the same, and the horizontal will be the same. Uh, I'd like to, I'll probably do them all white and then, you know, all, I'd like to all to kind of match. Okay. I think that would look nice. I've got everything white and white and brown and then the same brick and then, you know, kind of have it just all, all together. Okay. Yeah, I was just curious.
Well, I'll make a recommendation to approve per staff recommendations. A motion, I'm sorry. All right, we have a motion from John Thurman. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, Laura Cole has given us a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, looks like it passed. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. We'll follow up with you afterwards. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for coming, and thank you for your work. Okay, we're going to get our technical organization worked out real quick, but um, the next one is uh, Zero Worth Street, uh, number 2D23IH. I'm guessing they've applied for a new address. <laughs> they will, <laughs> yes. It's quite ironic. Yeah, I've had it happen to me. Um, yes, yeah, so this is pretty close to the previous development. Um, Unique time just right around the corner. So this is a new primary residence fronting Worth Street. Um, it is a one and a half story residence with a front gable roof, um, an eight over 12 pitch with a metal cladding, an exterior vinyl lap siding and a concrete foundation. Um, this house is proposed to be set 37 feet from the front property line um, with a note that I'll let the applicant speak to that is to preserve a, a larger shade tree there. Um, with an eight-foot deep front porch that's set 29 feet from the front property line. The parking will be a 12 by 40 driveway extending off the alley. It's perpendicular to the rear of the house. Um, you can see the elevation drawings here, and I'm happy to break that down further if we need to discuss. But some of the staff comments. So um, the house's main massing is proposed to be set 37 feet from the front property line um, with an eight-foot deep front porch at 29 feet. The average front setback of the block face is 21 feet. So um, the initial staff recommendation was that the house should be moved towards the front property line to align with that front setback pattern of the block and include a walkway from the front porch to the street. And the applicant has prov provided the response and I'll let them speak to that further that um, the, the significant front setback there is to preserve an existing larger tree. This block is characterized by one to one and a half story Queen Anne cottages, minimal traditionals and infill construction. Um, the house is proportionate to the dimensions of the lot and the other houses on the block. The side setbacks will be evenly spaced along the lot. The parking meets the infill housing guidelines. It's located behind the main house and accessible from an alley. There may be final modifications necessary to meet city engineering standards and ensure a proper turn radius from the garages. Modif modifications to parking could be approved by staff as long as they meet the design guidelines. Um, in general, the house is similar in scale and width to the block and neighborhood. Um, the guidelines do recommend that foundations be compatible with original houses in the neighborhood. The foundation height should be elevated to be compatible with those houses. Um, the design uses a partial width front gable porch on the right side of the facade um, that should use posts of at least eight by eight to be compatible with the context. And then um, one over one double hung windows are typically um, considered to be more appropriate for the neighborhood than the multi-light with simulated muntins. Um, infill housing reviews also typically discourage shutters unless they're appropriately scaled to the windows. The side elevations here do have sufficient transparency. Um, in general, the roof uh, pitch and the materials do meet the neighborhood context. Um, the side elevation drawings indicate eave overhangs, though they're not visible on those front and rear elevations. Um, the final design should incorporate at least a one foot eave overhang on all sides. Um, and the materials do meet the design guidelines. Infill guidelines don't recommend specific roofing materials, um, but do talk about darker shades being used. So staff is recommending, and I'll also note that the applicant has provided some, uh, a couple of revisions, some revised drawings that y'all can pass around and look at as, as we discuss, um, but the staff recommendation is to approve 2D23IH with um, the following conditions, that the front setback be modified to align with the pattern of the block, the final site plan meet city engineering standards and the coverage limits of the base zoning, um, the foundation height be elevated to be compatible with the original houses on the block. The final drawings omit the shutters or incorporate shutters appropriately s scaled for the window sizing, not siding. Um, the revision to the window placement in the front gable, um, that was from here. And then the applicant used vinyl siding with an overlap, overlap comparable to tr typical wood siding instead of the Dutch lap or flush panel. And the final site plan incorporate those trees in the front and rear yards. Thank you for that, Lindsay. Um, is the applicant here? Would they like to speak? Yes, I am here. 
Thank you. Please state your name and address. Sure. Uh, Sean Cupania, um, 8601 Amblecote Road, Knoxville, 37923. Uh, I apologize. I did not realize there were 10 of you, so I tried to save a tree uh, this morning as well and only printed off five packets. So the only two questions I really have, you'll see in the proposed, the revisions that I did alter things already based on the recommendations, remove the shutters, and fix the windows. Uh, the front setback I would like to discuss because it is there to preserve an existing shade tree that is 27 feet from the property line and that gives the foundation 10 feet from the center of the trunk so that we wouldn't be disrupting the root system too much. And then the other question I have is about the foundation height. You'll see I provided some drawings of foundation height or some pictures of foundation heights of similar houses where the yards have filled in to the point where the siding is touching the ground and the porches are basically slab porches. And so the design of the house being on a slab was to accommodate the fact that the average first story height in the neighborhood is eight feet. This house is nine and a half feet and that there aren't significant foundations of similar houses to keep the height as low as possible to be in line with the neighborhood. Um, I don't mind changing the height of the foundation, but I would like some guidance and recommendations on what height to pick if I am going to move forward, so. What, what is the, oh. Oh, yeah, is, is that all? That's it, yes. Okay. Yeah, everything else has been changed or is an easy, easy fix, so no worries about the rest of it. Well, thank you. Um, does anyone have any questions for the I applicant? Do. I do. Um, can you point out the tree that you're trying to save? Sure, if you go back to the picture that was just up there, that one, the one that is still alive. Okay, I was just, <laughs> I was just making sure that this. Yeah, this, this is a 2016 street view. Okay. So the tree behind it is already been removed because it was unhealthy. Okay. And the tree in the front yard is gone. It's just the existing pine tree there that's about 30 feet tall. Wonderful. I didn't want to be the bearer of bad news that the tree wasn't going to make it. No. Yes, yeah. yes. I, I would not preserve a dead tree. <laughs> the problem, right? It's in the tree board, but. Yeah. Right. Uh, on the, so on the discussion of the foundation, so is this, you're proposing a slab on grade structure? That was a proposal, yes. Okay. Um, I'd say my only comment on the fact that the, or maybe why the, what, what's wrong right now, I think, design-wise, and these are just, you know, suggestions, the proportions of the side elevations are really um, tall, and I think it's because the base of your home, of the home, is so minimal compared to the height above it. So you, you said you made a decision to make the height of the front porch nine foot six rather than, you said, typically eight? Yeah, is what you so said? we have interior ceilings of nine feet. Okay. And is there an upper floor that's actually occupiable? Yes. Okay. It'll be a half floor. I don't remember the exact numbers, but basically from the first floor to the eaves, there's about a three foot space there. Yeah. Two and a half, three feet. So it's a 12 foot to the eaves. So as far as the structure on the slab. So the knee wall would be about three or four feet in with mm -hmm. the ceiling height, I think of about 12 to 14 feet in the center. And I think if you looked at that, that left elevation and you actually had eaves accounted for, like Lindsay mentioned, that actually would show your roof projecting over, yes. it would already help the elevation at the head above the windows. And then the base having an actual thickness, which I don't know, 18 inches is probably something that I've seen around I'm, don't use that as gospel. I'm just saying something that's more substantial um, would give it um, just a better proportion right. of that side elevation. Yeah. Of course, that's going to mean you're going to have to add steps to your front porch and that sort of thing. So I don't know what the use is of this home. If it's a aging place type home, steps might be a hard thing to integrate, right? Like you don't want to do that for an elderly person. Yeah, I mean, it was de designed as sort of a second place for us when we want to spend time in the city and to have our uh, parents have a place to come when they visit. So I was trying to minimize steps, and that was also the reason for the garage access in the back was to... Yeah, I have a couple of questions. What is the proposed ceiling height inside the house? It looks very tall, I think, in addition to the comments Cameron has about no basement and no drop on the eave and the rendering, but it still yeah. looks... Rather so tall. It's, a, it's about a nine foot ceiling height on okay. the first floor. And the other question that uh, you may encounter with Mr. Aarons and his friends, I don't don't know that you can get egressible openings in a two 
eight by four four window. So um, okay. I believe when you get to a larger window, it's really going to help its appearance as well. Uh, Sounds so. great. I, I picked those windows from measuring off Google Maps what my neighbor's window sizes were. I was trying right. to match them. I am totally fine putting larger single pane one over one windows. That's not a problem. Yeah, at all. So I, I would. Uh, I, I think it. codes will probably the demand a window that we'll like better. Okay. <laughs> and the other question was about the two garages not next to each other. Is the proposal that this may be a duplex at some point, or is there some, if you re repair cars, I, I wouldn't mind that arrangement. I could. So um, <laughs> the primary use for me is I'm also a hobbyist with a laser cutter and other things. And so I was planning half of it to be a workshop and half of it to be a garage. In the future, we do have two sets of parents. So we're gonna make the upstairs and the downstairs both viable places which also would give separation in the garages. But really the main design thing is we were gonna use a steel, steel and wood frame composite frame for this. And the bays are 14 feet on either side and 12 feet in the middle. And so the garage doors more comfortably fit with windows. So it fits. With that bay access. Right. Right. Uh, on that upstairs too, you may also encounter in plans review, I think knee wall minimum heights are like five feet. But, yeah, no so that, that'll make your floor area smaller up there, right. but you can stick your closets in those little, yeah. I, I have a house with that exact problem. So. Got you. No, <laughs> I, I, I do as well. My bonus room has knee walls that are good for a poodle and that's about it. So <laughs> understood. On the, on the foundation material, it just says concrete and maybe that's already in the comments, but that would be required to at least get a, um, yeah, maybe she's telling me a brick or the parge coat on it to be able to. Uh, cover that. I was going to ask too about the roofing material. You said painted metal. I'd be really interested to know uh, if you mean a corrugated painted or an actual like a standing seam metal. What are you thinking for that? Um, so I wish I knew the difference. Well, sorry, corrugated. <laughs> you see, like the rolling. It's a bit, that's the cheaper stuff that you generally see, and that's unfortunately pretty. It's fairly predominant in that area, but it's got exposed fasteners. The paint wears out pretty quickly. No, no. Okay. This is um, high quality where there's far fewer corrugations between. Is the there a is there a, a rib like every there five is. feet? There's a rib every two feet. Five feet. Yeah, yeah two okay. feet, one foot. Okay. Yeah. But the, the ribs overlap on the edges to cover the fasteners for the most part. So. Yep. Can we go back to the discussion about the front yard placement? Sure. Just because I'm trying to understand. I mean, it does look, in, in, in comparison to other infill we review, sometimes the block's all over the place. When I look at the KGIS map, it looks pretty consistent. And I'm just trying to, I can't, I'm trying to put to scale, your house would, or this house would be much further back, like almost at the, starting at the back of the house of the other it like is, sort of where her like yeah. Lindsay's cursor is. Is that where you're generally proposing it? Yes. Yeah. So out of the 19 residents on the block, five of them on the back street have 40 foot setbacks, and two of the ones further down have 30 foot setbacks. Are you talking just, about front setbacks or front setbacks? Okay. I just happen to be in the one part of the block where everyone snuggled up to the street. So I see. And yeah. so. If you were guessing, just so I can help with these numbers, because I'm looking at your site plan. Lindsay, can you zoom in just a little bit again? Thanks. So the, 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 the neighbor next door, how far do you think that is set back? My guess is that the setback on the neighbor next door is probably 22-ish feet or so. 24. 24 Approximately. Yes, yeah. yeah. And so you're showing yours at like, 37. Yeah, yeah. But the porch that we have is double the width of their porch, so that'll mitigate right. some of that. So it's really 29, and it's a big part of the porch, yeah. I mean the house, okay. Yeah. I mean, in all honesty, if I can stick with the slab foundation and not to dig, I think I could set the front set back at 32 feet and have five feet for the root system, which would put the front of the porch equal to the setback on the, the house next to us, and only their porch would be ahead of ours. Because it is a rather substantial porch compared to the two closely neighboring properties. Mm -hmm. so, and if you look right across the street, you can see we also have variations in setbacks. Sure, there as that's well. true. 
So. Mm -hmm. Hey, Peter, Aaron's, what is code require for your your sill plate above grade before it has to be pressure treated? Is it six inches? Your sill plate is going to need to be pressure treated because um, of its proximity to the grade below. Oh, and, and also because it, it's, it's on concrete, right? Because it's on concrete. Yeah. yeah. I'll get yeah. you an exact measurement. It's either six yeah. or eight inches. Yeah, I didn't oh, build, oh. I didn't bring the engineering drawings or the framing plan because initially I had planned a two-story home and didn't think I was going to be able to get it through. But now that I see my neighbor <laughs> uh, across the street, I you might think about revising that. But yes, it's pressure-treated lumber on the frame on the bottom. And that... Um, and this is just for just to keep in mind, some some siding manufacturers require a certain height above grade just for splash guard from rain and right. things like that. So look into that, I guess, before whatever you, I don't yeah. know if you're specifying vinyl, it's probably not an issue with vinyl, but anything aside from that with James Hardy's fiber cement or wood is going to be um, more strict. Yeah. Also then, in... I was going to say right next to the house, there's an alley. So it's a little bit of a different... It's almost like a corner lot. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, also in the packet, um, there's a picture of a house on the block that uses siding to make a faux foundation. Given the height of the first floor in this house, I've also considered putting a one-foot lap around of you know, engineered brick siding or stucco on the siding on the bottom to make it look as if there's a a more substantial foundation, and I'd like to get your thoughts on that as a potential option as well. Oh. I mean, we'd have to see it drawn because I don't know how that translates to the front. You know, how does it wrap around to all the other sides of the building? Right. Um, I think that might be problematic when you come over to the front porch. It's going to step down because there's no, there's nothing. You know, there's nowhere to go higher on your porch, right? Right. Because you've got the right. guard, the guardrail right. there. There's, a, there's an existing story and a half house very similar to this in the 1900 block because I was looking around for two-story yeah. buildings primarily to, for the previous applications discussion. And uh, then I looked at yours and said, oh, I just saw that house. It's on the 1900 block. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I spent a lot of time looking at houses in the neighborhood and trying to match them. Um, like the second house from Churchwell. So the code requires the sill plate to be six inches minimum above grade. I would also like to add for context, there is a desire from our um, disability coordinator to provide visitable housing mm. for a zero step entry and access. And it sounds like he's trying to do what other parts of the city are trying to accomplish. You're saying that's a that's something that the city's trying to start to require for entries at homes? No, there's a desire <laughs> oh. from our Don't quote, quote unquote disability. <laughs> it, it also helps. Well, well, and, that, and that that's part of anything that goes through their programs has to be visitable. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so yeah. there is a desire, yeah. but as it impacts me, I'm not to the point where I'm going to require that. Understood. But it is encouraged. Certainly Mesa's garage is easier to deal with. It, it yes. Because they can then be on the same level as the rest of the floor. Correct. You don't have to drop them. Yeah. I don't think having a minimal foundation is a problem as long as it's detailed appropriately and that it's going to be durable and right. meet all of the standards that the code requires. And to Perry's comment about the windows needing to be larger, I think that's going to substantially change yep. how the elevations look and addressing the eaves. The so eaves are addressed in the drawings that I submitted the today. So. Um, well, hold on. So you said the eaves are addressed in this drawing? The one, yeah, they're one foot on either side now. Okay, but what about along the roof line? So those are in the side drawings. Yeah, they're shown over. Here. They're already shown in the side drawings. They're one or one and a half feet. Read that. Yeah. Well, part of part okay, of but the, you're gonna have a thickness to the structure there. Like yeah. you're just showing a single line as if there's no fascia. 
I do not have the engineer drawings to know what the thickness is exactly or how they're going to accommodate that. So it'll look better when you see it with that. It'll yeah 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 it'll be better when that thickness is there. I, one question about the the offset window on the front elevation. I know there was a comment on that, so it looks like you've ganged them. Uh, is there no potential of just centering one window right below the ornamental only and not have the offset, or is and this the, not possible? The revisions have done that. Yep. Oh, he did that. In Re the this yeah. is yeah. revision two. Oh, but no, I'm looking at revision here. And I meant not have that window. This guy. There's just something a little bit strange about that. Again, that's we're not here to dictate every single thing. It just looks a bit odd with I'm that. Perfectly happy to remove it. Yeah. I was gonna. Yeah. I'm to totally fine removing. You've done a whoever. If it was you or whoever designed it, did a nice job with symmetry elsewhere. I would think that that'd just be the the bow on it to have that. Sounds good. I, I will cut that window out. Wasn't sold on it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you got to put a bathroom somewhere, so it'll be a good yeah. place. Sir. I was going to make a motion, but then I realized I still feel unresolved about the setback. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, I'm sort of, I'm not wanting to take over. I'm just trying to understand what's the board's concern. I mean, part of it, you know, if you get it too close, then the tree dies, then you're just further back in the block than everybody else. Right. Um, but also, I like your spirit of trying to get it in alignment but save the tree sure. so i i feel like i could go i feel like i could support your um by scratching the, the comment about the setback and 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 do something modified if you feel comfortable about it because you'd said you, your site plan you submitted said 37 oh yeah and then, I, I think i could move it up a few feet i'd be a little bit hesitant to move more than five feet up but you know three to five feet moving up is if you can go with a slab on grade then that lets you get a little closer. right because then i can put french trains around the root system as well so yeah how does every is everybody else i mean is, I is think there comfort you, of that i support trying to keep the tree while also bringing it up so i'm a tree yeah hugger. i like it. it's there and established and you know so what kind of tree is it look like a pine tree right it's a uh, it's a pine tree pine of some tree. sort, yeah. If it's a pine, you might not be... Yeah. Never mind. Okay, let's save it. <laughs> <laughs> no, share your tree perspective. It may, come, it, may, it may come down on its own. Pines are notorious for... Yeah, I mean, it's questionable because the ones around it are didn't make it as well. But the, the ones around it have been down, I think, for four or five years. years? So okay. this one, you know, as of last week, it seems to be fairly thriving. <laughs> I'm not going to... You bet on the longevity of the tree because I'm sure. not an arborist. It's kind of, but. I would say with the sparsity yeah. of the number of trees on that street, if we hear that the design review board is requiring him to cut it down, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. <laughs> I'm not saying that. <laughs> yeah. I, just, I, I know in the area, too, most of these trees aren't actually planted. They're just where people didn't weed eat around old fences. So <laughs> I wonder if those three trees in line were just a <laughs> relic fans. of neighbors not maintaining their... That's a sidebar. No, that's how, it is that's on how you my make a forest. Looks I mean, a little more cedar. <laughs> yeah. Than, yeah. Looks more cedar than pine. Yeah. And this, yeah. than that Maybe it's cedar. Way. Lindsay, well, can you okay. go back to the KGIS, please? Actually, 1806 Worth Street and this lot were a single lot until eight months mm. ago. So that, they weren't a single lot, but they were a single owner and managed as a single lot. So. Mm. That structure to the northwest is your neighbor's garage or it outbuilding? Is. It is. Garage. Yeah, I don't. I don't see that the setback is incredibly important in this context. I mean, there's a couple houses next to you on the south side, where I think it it would be nice if they all aligned. But I think it's so open at that corner that it doesn't matter if you want to keep the tree and and push it farther back. I think I'd yeah. rather have the tree. And the corner on the alley. Yeah, I agree. I make a motion to approve per your modifications here that Lindsay's made and also your revised presentation. Okay. Second. Okay, John Thurman has made a motion and Suzanne Taravella has made a second. Um, is there any more discussion? Not hearing any. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. And I think that's it. Short docket today. Um, thanks for coming, everybody. 
and we will see you next month.